Hello and welcome to another episode of the IdeaCast. Our topic today is all about migrating the customer base and the dynamic impact. So what I have in mind for the talk today is, first of all, get us grounded again. Why does it matter? Why even care about customer base migration? And then uh, I would like to walk through a, a short case study and explain some of the key consideration strategies and tactics. And then uh, we will take a look at the resulting performance scenarios from a set of simulations. So why does it matter? Why should we care? Um, migration and upgrades offer a great opportunity and a great risk at the same time for a company in terms of cost. Um, so maintaining two or more product uh, bases and code bases in the software industry, for example, absorbs uh, a lot of resources. Um, and that is also true for um, internal customers, for example, people who have uh, an IT infrastructure and they need to migrate users from one place to another. If you have a lot of users stuck on the old legacy systems, uh, then that will absorb a lot of attention and resources. But also uh, competition matters because customers of, um, of a company on legacy products have a higher chance of churning away and they are usually a target of uh, companies who offer a more compelling um, uh, product or an innovative product. And also satisfaction. Usually, um, normally the satisfaction with newer products should be actually better. That's why you, you do new product developments usually uh, if they reach uh, some sense of uh, go-to-market maturity, of course. And uh, the risk factors are also important. <clears throat> Legacy products may have a higher security risk, for example, not only in the um, in the software industry, but it could also be uh, for durable products, for example, when they are wearing out, you may have uh, um, a risk that people are getting injured, etc. You would have to do a product recall, which is yet a, a whole different topic where I'm, I'm doing currently uh, some briefings and, and video briefings about this topic. You may want to check that out as well. But also in terms of revenue, uh, when you're upgrading customers, you may or may want, not want to charge uh, an, an upgrade price. For example, when you, you offer migration services for uh, larger um, business solutions, for example. Uh, but uh, you could also charge a premium for a better product, for example. And in the, in the sense of uh, migrating customers to uh, what is now called a software as a service platform, you also have another uh, recurring revenue opportunity when you're moving from a traditional product where you charged, uh, let's say, a license fee and then annual maintenance or even only a one-time fee. Uh, that offers a new um, opportunity for generating more revenue. Now, all things considered, um, safeguarding is really about um, bringing the, the highest number of your most valuable customers from uh, the current uh, place, the, the legacy products to the new products and migrate them in the shortest possible time. Uh, that's another key consideration. So you don't want to have this migration project dragging on forever and ever. And that brings us to the topic of uh, business dynamics. So um, I want to step back a little bit for those who have not um, uh, seen the some of the previous episodes. So I want to get us grounded. Basically, what we are talking about <clears throat> in terms of customer migration is uh, moving people from the current to the new product. And uh, that is a flow of customers. So a number of customers per day, per week, per month, per year that is moving into this direction. And ideally, what you want to see is that your, your customer base in the current product uh, in the legacy product is going down and at the same time uh, the new product uh, sees more and more customers but of course things happen uh, during that time so uh, also what needs to be considered is that the migration usually uh, involves a number of steps now i have simplified that here but you you could say for example that people first have to to try the product they might need some assistance 
or in a, in a more complex solution, uh, a new integration is necessary and testing is necessary and you might need to migrate all your business data to your new product. So again, we want to, we want to make sure that this is working flawlessly, but also in the shortest possible time, of course. Now, um, when customers go through these stages, and again, keep in mind that this mig migration funnel, similar to a conversion funnel, may go through different stages. So this is a simplification. But what I'm showing here is um, uh, a model uh, which has all the, the necessary steps. And what you might see happening during a migration is that people are starting to to leave your customer base, for example, leaving already your existing customer base. But when people are uh, trying the product, they may not purchase or if they have um, actually adopted the new product, you might lose some customers as well. So we have to con consider these churn rates, the churn of, of customers from these uh, buckets, of course. And <clears throat> that means that we have a number of uh, lost customers that we may reactivate at some point in time. So that's an Im important consideration. Now what I'm showing here is a is a system of stocks. Uh, so the, the, the stock of customers uh, in these different stages and the flows between these stocks. So it's kind of a coherent system if you want. And uh, customers have to be in one stage or another or actually uh, flowing from one stage uh, to another. So they cannot get uh, lost here in the system unless they deliberately choose to uh, leave the the installed base in in one of these uh, flows here. Now, um, when it comes to managing this uh, system for migration, we, the, we have to consider a couple of things. So first, there will be delays. The delay until customers have completed their trial or their, their test phase or the time when they renew the product, the time when the contract is expiring, etc. So that's already a little bit of a, a com complication here, which introduces some dynamics. But uh, not only that, we also have to consider, um, let's call this the fractional loss uh, here. So that, if, and that means that a fraction of the customers who are trying the product will buy the product, but another fraction will actually not buy the product. So we are going to lose them. A fraction of the customers is renewing the product. Another fraction might say, okay, I'm not going to renew this. Wasn't really what we expected. So we're not going to renew the contract here. So we have to keep those in mind, of course. And the third um, key area is uh, the notion about word of mouth and how uh, actually the sale or the trial process is actually happening. So there could be three levers here, and I'm only calling out these three levers. So one could be you actually actively selling the product or, or moving customers actively. Uh, you have some marketing going on where you're communicating uh, via marketing campaigns and vehicles to your customers and enticing them to um, to adopt the new product or try it and, and then uh, convert. And you might have some word of mouth, of course. So these are three key levers that are important for our consideration here in this case study. So what we are interested in now is uh, if we have a scenario, for example, like this, uh, this is a company which had uh, 10,000 customers and this was the projected uh, loss of the installed base. So you can see that over the course of 60 months or five years, in other words, they will lose the entire base of this legacy um, product. And the question is, what could they do? So there, um, there, there's the scenario where you, for example, in this case, you have an, a, a product, an enterprise solution, which is an on-site solution, and the customers are typically paying uh, twelve hundred per year, say dollars or euros or what what have you, and <clears throat> you have an annual renewal process. And the new solution might be a software as a service, a cloud-based solution where you collecting uh, hundred per month and uh, that's based on the monthly subscription and customers could leave the subscription any point in time. And this uh, is supposed to have a lower churn. So you want to move customers from current to new and the migration time is expected to take about three months. 
Now, there could be different approaches how to do this. So in this case, uh, we were talking about an assisted approach, for example. Um, sorry, an unassisted uh, approach, which is marketing driven uh, with an average duration of three months. So if you do only marketing campaigns, informing customers, on average, they take three months, could be more or less. And the conversion rate is usually 70% uh, based on the initial uh, testings here. Um, but you could also think about an assisted migration with referrals. So, for example, where, uh, sorry, an unassisted migration with referrals, where the, the, the same parameters apply, but in addition, you have a referral marketing campaign, for example, a refer a friend campaign, and uh, based on 50 uh, contacts per month, so uh, between the adopters and non-adopters, and a conversion rate of 10, of 1%. So we are looking at uh, how that's going to play out over time. And of course, um, assisted migration now, where you engage your customer success team. And here uh, the parameters are as follows. Here the, the duration uh, of a client moving from a, cur from a legacy to a new product takes uh, one and a half month and the conversion rate is uh, significantly higher. So we're interested now in how does the change play out over time. And when we're running the simulation for this uh, kind of scenario, uh, here's what uh, we would expect. So in the marketing driven campaign, you have uh, customers starting to adopt the product. And then uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the uh, uh, five years period, you would have actually secured and safeguarded a whole lot more customers than in the baseline case. Now, um, keep in mind that the uh, migration is starting here at some point in time. I think it's about month uh, six in this uh, simulation. And this is actually what happens. Now, um, as the, the migration is starting, uh, customers are leaving the legacy product. So they're coming into this bucket of customers who are trying the uh, new solution. And then uh, as soon as they are trying, some of them will already start converting to the new legacy platform. And there you see that you have first an accelerating decline and then the, uh, the whole movement uh, catches itself and then it's converging, uh, of course, to the uh, customers who are uh, converting to the new product. Um, now, if you do the same exercise with referral, and now in this case, we had not a strong um, word of mouth here, but you can see already that there's a, a slight difference when I'm toggling back and forth here. So there's a larger number of customers trying actually, and uh, that leads to a certain effect um, that in this bucket of customers who are trying, you have uh, a higher number uh, over time. So this is the number of customers who are in this bucket of trying, of in this stage uh, of, of trying the new solution. And um, in the case of assisted migration, um, here's what's happening. So this is the overall movement and you can see already we have a higher number of customers. Now, why is that? If we take a look at the, uh, the stocks here, um, we are moving uh, a number of customers to the assisted migration and you can see already it's happening over a much shorter period of time. So this curve, this adoption curve of the new uh, product is actually uh, steeper and uh, much more condensed. So that period is uh, much more condensed. And you see that you're not losing uh, as many customers here. Now, again, this is not a case for um, uh, customer success and engaging the customer success, but in, in some way it is, of course, because the um, as it turns out, the performance here is much better. Now, in your individual case, the results may vary, of course, because the productivity, the win-loss ratio of customer success may be different. Your, your digital marketing capabilities may be different where you have a higher click-through rate, a higher conversion rate, uh, and so on. Now, this is only to illustrate the difference in the approaches here. And here you can see what the difference uh, are looking like over time. So at the end of the period, the baseline, we would lose almost all of our customers. And by engaging marketing and, and customer success, we can safeguard 
a much higher portion of customers. And of course, it will be interesting to see what's happening if you're going all in with all of these uh, uh, strategies and tactics, if you can afford it, if you don't have to make a trade-off between one and the other, uh, of course. And here you can see the flow rate. So the conversion rate, the flow of customers over time. So these are the numbers of customers who are converting to the new product. And there you can see that the through the exist, um, assisted migration, you see that this curve is steeper and also um, much more customers are converting because we have, of course, a higher fraction of customers converting over time. Now, when you're, you're sitting with uh, companies and discussing this, of course, people come with different proposals and ideas and their business cases. And it's good to... First of all, simulate these changes over time, make these tra um, assumptions transparent so that you can make a, a better uh, systemic informed decision about uh, which approach you are going to uh, use over time. Now, mapping all these flows to uh, our, our chart here, our stock and flow diagram, um, uh, so this is of course how the 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 pool of legacy customers is draining over time now if we accelerate the migration then we do expect that this pool of customer is uh changing over time and of course some of the customers might be leaving which is aggravating our situation here but a portion of them is flowing in uh, to the pool of uh, customers trying the product and uh, this pool is increasing over time and then uh, dying down over time as and more and more customers are either uh, churning away or converting to customers who are actually purchasing the product. And that gives us this adoption curve here that we saw earlier. So this is the adoption curve of the new product. Now, what is the impact uh, in this case, um, in a study in this case scenario? Um, the baseline uh, looked like this, that we were able to safeguard about 30,000 customers. But these different campaigns and tactics gave us some leverage here. So with marketing, we were able to secure another 23,000 uh, customers and with assisted um, uh, approach, we were able to safeguard 37,000 customers. So that brings us up to almost 70,000 customers that we could safeguard uh, from our existing 100,000 customers over time. But if you would run all of these together, you get an additional uh, kind of a network effect, if you want, um, by um, combining these efforts. Why is that the case? Because when you're moving more customers, into your bucket of, um, uh, let's say, uh, users, active users, you're also kickstarting the word of mouth effect. So that's one, one important reason why you see uh, the combined effect being much larger. So the, the individual impacts would give you about a 77% lift, uh, another incremental 26% lift if you would engage your customer success team here. And... Um, uh, of course, you see here the difference between the individual effects, uh, that would be uh, this 123% uh, uplift, and uh, the incremental effect by combining them all together. Now, these are important considerations because you need to make up your mind how you're going to run the migration campaign, who should be involved, um, where do you want to invest the time and effort, uh, and so on. Now, I want to conclude today's uh, talk with uh, 10 tactics that you could consider and you should consider actually when migrating customers from one place to another. The first one is test, test, test your new product. And the reason for that is you may want to take out all the reasons that prompt customers to quit, to churn away. So testing is absolutely important. Secondly, offer an early adopter program and that serves to Prime the word of mouth pump, which means that you have customers who are adopters and they are actually um, talking to other customers and that is creating a, a word of mouth driven pull effect, a very powerful feedback loop. And I talked about that in different settings, in different briefings. So you may want to revisit also some of the marketing briefings where I talk a lot about how to unleash the, the power of word of mouth. Number three, 
establish and engage your customer success team. Customer success team can really boost productivity and profitability of the customer base. Number four, uh, start a marketing mix between um, awareness um, about the new product, but also uh, success stories and referral campaigns. These are all important to uh, unleash, again, the, the power of word of mouth and moving customers from one place to another. Um, you can offer an early bird special. That's different from number two. An early adopter program is where you're basically running a beta test and you ask people to, to te test and try the product. An, an early bird special program is when your product is coming out of development, the beta phase is over, and you offer an, uh, let's say, a, an early discount or something like that. So that gives us, again, testimonials, which again drive the word of mouth feedback loop. Number six, optimize the trial time. Now you've seen that a longer trial time actually makes this migration period fairly long. And if you shorten it, you can cut down on the, the time frame. And that's a very important and vulnerable time. So you may want to shorten that time, but you don't want to cut down the trial time too short because then customers will, of course, say, well, I didn't even have time to check out the product. So how, how do you expect me to purchase the new product? Number seven, make sure that the customers remain active during the trial and during the usage of the product. Now, in many business, what I find is we have an increasing number of what I call dormant customers who have purchased the product and they're not using it. These are candidates for future churn. So you may want to really consider that and uh, either have live signals in your product and complement that also with uh, customer surveys. Then in order to facilitate the migration, you can offer do it for me services, migration services, for example, uh, migrate my data or uh, do the integration for me, the integration testing and so on. These are all ways to uh, basically um, make it easier for customers to adopt the new product. Number nine. Tighten up your support policies for the legacy products. Now, you can't do that really when you're launching the new product. Actually, that's not a good practice to do that. But every time you are launching a product, you can implement this new support policy by saying, okay, for a period of X month after a new product version is available, you can get support. After that, you can still get support, but it's going to be, for example, a paid support for your product for maintenance releases or custom development. And now by tightening up these, these time periods, you can uh, create an initial incentive for customers to move to your new product. So when I, I get a, a product upgrade and only the new product is supported, I do want to move to the new product, of course. And number 10, and um, go to the move to the cloud based services and establish and enable a continuous innovation. You see that now with many software products where you really don't notice that there are gradual changes, uh, but you, you get a, a constant flow of new features and ideas. Um, and uh, coming in into your your product, and that's a better way than if you have to deinstall, reinstall a product, move uh, products to new server infrastructure, and so on. These are certainly very vulnerable um, uh, stages. And by moving to a cloud-based service, you can take that risk down down or take it completely out of the equation. So these are 10 tactics what you can do to accelerate um, the migration and also to improve the safeguarding of your customers. Now, um, the, the, as you've seen, the strategies and tactics, they drive different dynamics. And I would encourage you to um, try this out and conduct a performance scenario planning session with your team. If you have an important installed base and it's a significant part of your business, then you really want to invest the time and make also your implicit assumption transparent. I often get the question, okay, Thomas, how do I know these assumptions? And I say, well, you, you have these assumptions implicit. You have a mental model about how things are going to play out over time. So let's make it transparent and let's play through a simulation what is going to happen based on your assumptions. 
And then when you are in the, uh, the migration uh, phase, then monitor the progress and assess the true parameters very carefully, especially if you have a migration that takes on for let's say six months, a year, or maybe even two years could, could very well be. So you may want to get the live data and then update your, your priors, update your assumptions uh, over time. And that gives you uh, a better picture of how change is going to unfold and how things are changing over time. And then, of course, um, consider the relative performance of the strategy. So uh, some of these um, strategies might uh, complement each others. Some of them could even contradict each other. So again, simulate, play it out over time and, and conduct a scenario planning session. And that gives you some uh, more insights here, some to make informed decisions. Also, um, also make sure that you understand the the impact on the uh, the churn uh, fractions and the conversion fractions. So acceleration, for example, shortening the trial time can accelerate the churn, uh, can but it can also accelerate the conversion. So you may want to test that in a small group, uh, for example, a small group of customers to see uh, which of these tactics work very well. So doing a B tests, uh, so to speak here. Now, in the briefing center, as always, you can find more work uh, sheets and simulations and video briefings. And of course, the, the biggest value is there also to ask some questions, get some group coaching um, in the um, on the Academy website. You may want to watch out for this uh, uh, symbol here for the logo and as always uh, I would be very happy if we can stay connected so uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel then you get automatic notification about upcoming videos and it will be great if you can share this episode within your network. Until the next time I wish you good luck with your migration strategies and um, yeah, you may want to also check out some of the other topics in the IdeaCast. Until then, I wish you good luck.